how's it going everyone, Kenneth Tiger here and welcome back to another episode of Kane's Bedtime. Uh, I've got a few things to talk about tonight, uh, I might start this off. i uh, got my second COVID jab, I am all vaccinated and ooh, that, did, that one rocked me. I thought people were just being babies saying oh it hurts, it hurts, but as soon as I got that, I was fine the first day, the next day, <sighs> felt it in my arm, but I thought it was just a little pinch. But that night, ooh, that was a rough night. Um, once again, I had the cold sweats, but it felt very... I was actually shivering this time. I thought, oh shit, what's going on? And then, I, I swear I was hallucinating dreams. I don't know if I was awake or if I was a, uh, in a dream, but so I was just laying in bed and it's like, oh, I just I fancied a glass of water, but for some reason I just didn't do it. It was really weird, but... After that, the next morning, it was like being a butterfly. I was reborn. I felt great, 100%. And yeah, it just it seemed to pass quickly. It wasn't like getting a head cold and knocking you off about a week or two. No, as soon as that passed, I was all good. So yeah, I'm all done with that. And um, yeah, I've got a, a lot of uh, wrestling to talk about, especially AEW. So I've done it in highlights. So it's... An episode before All Out and then an episode after, so I'm just going to, I just wrote down the highlights that I just remember seeing and uh, yeah, uh, All Out, quite a show, uh, highlights. Uh, Sting and Derby versus 2.0, uh, I remember this being a really good match that uh, Sting didn't, he was put through a table and he just got right back up and then got 2.0 and a double sharpshooter, so I thought that was really cool. Sammy proposed to his girlfriend, which was really lovely. And I just want to say, um, Don Callis, is that, I feel like that's wrong, I'm sure that's right, um, I love his promo and talking skills, especially when he's on the commentary table, just, when him and JR get in with each other, it's just really awesome, and I just learned, he's the Jackal, was that his name at the time in WWF, the Jackal, and he would manage, um, Cougar? Oh, I can't remember. I actually really loved the theme, and I'd be listening to that theme, but I didn't put two and two together. I didn't realize that was the same guy. I was like, oh, shit. Now, this is going to be a long one. CM Punk debuts on AEW. I felt like I was a wrestling fan from 2012, where I was just... It was the last year I was really hardcore into wrestling, and then I slowly started to decline like I would never miss a show and um yeah I not gonna lie I almost little tear almost it was a little like I was getting the emotions in but I think what it was it I was one of those people that just thought oh well go fuck yourself because I was a huge CM Punk fan from 2006 when he cut his first promo in ECW you know my name is CM Punk. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I'm all about the straight edge lifestyle. And then he he went up against Just Incredible, and I was just an instant fan. I would follow him on every you know, whatever show he was on. I would make sure I'd be tuning in to watch him. And then when he cut the famous pipe bomb, that just made me even a a bigger fan of his. I just loved CM Punk but then the day that happened where he just said enough walked out and I thought you know what the hell what's going on was it like another Stone Cold incident where he just just didn't want to sort of um how do I put it hmm lay down essentially you know I'm not going to do it no I walk out fuck you and then I thought well Screw you. <laughs> if that's what you're going to be like, I'm not, I don't want to know. But then, after he could talk, because I know WWE, it is such bullshit what WWE do to these wrestlers, or not wrestlers, superstars. Never. I despise the fact that they cannot appear on another show for 90 days. That is fucking bullshit. I hate that. I, that's another reason I just cannot do WWE anymore. Bear in mind I watch WWF, but no, that's disgusting. I hate that. I despise that. But then when I found out what CM Punk was going through, I was like, oh, 
fuck, that sucks. Now I don't blame you, that's that's awful what they were doing to you. And then I thought, oh well, maybe he'll appear on another wrestling promotion. A year went by, second year went by, and then it was it was like he said, oh, I just don't like wrestling anymore. I thought, well, all right then. Yeah, I put all the figures away. I thought if I don't want to, you know, it just, it hurt basically. And I know that sounds bloody ridiculous, but it sucked. I mean, I, I was a huge fan. I would always watch him and then I bought his figures and stuff. I got, you know, all this stuff. And then just to have that feeling, it was like, well, all right then, I don't want your gear. Lucky I didn't throw them out. I wasn't that you know, uh, petty. Seven years later, debuts on AEW, and he cuts the promo. And it, when he was talking about the, you know, and I know that some of you out there, you were hurt. I get it. And it was like, oh. And I became an instant fan again. It was just. It was he was happy I could see him he felt happy again and it just I kind of just went I'm being an idiot here get over it he did what he had to do I don't blame him for do it for him doing what he did and I just it was just great seeing him in a ring again and then to see him at all out wrestle and I was like it was like 2012 again, I was just, it's like what AEW has right now feels like I'm watch, uh, falling in love with wrestling again. Like bear in mind, AEW was sort of, they were kind of mm, a bit, but just perked right up for me and I just, it's just great to see him back and yeah, we'll move on from that. Just very happy to see him back. Radio, right, on to all that. Uh, Miro versus Eddie Kingston. I actually really enjoyed this match. It, I'm all about the slobber knockers. I love my high flying, but it feels like there's a lot of high flying stuff in AW. Like, it's very, oh, over there, oh, over there. And sometimes it gets very whew, tiring. So, this match just really satisfied my cravings. That it's what I wanted. I just wanted a good old, you know, uh, uh, punch, punch. And there was a few flying moments, don't get me wrong. And, I really enjoyed it. It was a great match. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, John Moxley versus, oh, sorry if I get this wrong, Satoshi Kojima. Uh, it was a good match, but I don't know what it is. I am I was a huge fan of John Moxley when he was in WWE. I got the um, uh, Money in the Bank plaque where all members of the Shield won the title in one night or held the title in one night. But I don't know. When he debuted and he showed up and took Kenny out, I was like, fuck yeah. But as time goes on, I'm just sort of getting bored with John. I don't know what it is. I, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, the matches he has are brutal and impactful and just cut through. But whenever I see him, I just think, hmm. I don't know. I just, maybe I'm just. I just need time to sort of settle in a bit more. I mean, I know he's been there two years, but it's just... Uh, I don't know what it is. I just cannot get behind him at the moment. Hopefully, I can get over that. Uh, Chris Statlander versus Britt Baker. I really enjoyed this match right near the end as well. There was a lot of power moves going on and kick out and kick out and kick out. And then finally, Britt got the win. But yeah, I, I actually really love Chris Statlander. She's really awesome. I'm hoping she wins the women's title one day. She's really great. Ooh, Lucha Bros versus the Young Bucks. Match of the night, and honestly, probably my favorite match of the year. Now, I did say that with the whole the high-flying moves and lots of uh, moments where it gets planned out and it gets really, you know, whew. right near the end, I was getting like that. It was like, oh, come on. I wish it would just end. Come on. Stressing me out, stressing me out. Lucha Bros win, no AEW Tag Team Champions, almost shed a tear when Penta was hugging his little girl and his wife was there, and it was a feel-good moment, and the right team won that night. If they had lost, I think it just would have, it just would have really 
brought the pay per view down in my opinion. And yeah, I just they were my number one team when I first when I started watching AEW, watching the first pay per view event. I th were they? They were there. Yeah, I remember because I was like, oh, I know you, uh, Penta. Is it Penta L Zero? I'm sure I've seen him advertised in so many comics for Lucha Underground or AAA. I'm not sure. I'd always see him with the mask, and I'm hoping it's the right guy. But when I'd seen him, I'm like, oh, I know you. <laughs> so, yeah, they were my number one to win the tag team titles, and they finally done it, and I'm so happy. Can I, I'm looking forward to their run as tag team champions. Uh, the Battle Royal for the number one contenders women. Jeez, I screwed that up. But for the number one contendership for the women's title. Mmm. Don't get me wrong. I love Ruby Wright or Ruby Soho. I thought she was great in at WWE and NXT when she was being used in this program. But eh, I don't think she should have won in my opinion. It's very... It's... I don't get why they've always got to have the WWE people coming in and winning the first round of like their matches and stuff like I understand you don't want to just make them lose but come on <laughs> really Chris Jericho versus MJF my heart stopped when the three count went I thought don't you dare but then they restarted the yeah the match but uh I'm just glad that feud is over I was getting very tired and I thought this should have happened on the final stage of the Jericho uh, Trials of Hell, whatever it was called, but great match though, great match. Uh, the emotions were high. I thought oh, we're gonna lose Jericho, and uh, yeah, I'm so glad we didn't. Uh, CM Punk versus Darby Allen. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's like I'm rewatching a game when I was really passionate about uh, wrestling, and I'm just so happy to see him back wrestling. Oh yeah, once again, <laughs> uh, WWE guy wins. Uh, Paul Wright vs. Cutie Marshall. Uh, it's great seeing not big show uh, Paul Wright wrestling again, but I can tell he's very. I think he's just close to retirement, and he's just trying to enjoy the last few years of his wrestling career while he can. Uh, Christian Cage vs. Kenny Omega. It was a good match, but to me, it was just really predictable. Christian already beat Kenny for the. Impact World Titles, and he wasn't gonna win again. I, this is a problem I have with AEW. You can kind of tell who's gonna win. Not to compare, but what I loved with WWE in the past years, not like now, you couldn't tell who was gonna win. You had people like Stone Cold vs Triple H. You didn't know who was gonna win. The Rock vs The Undertaker. You didn't know who was going to win. The Undertaker versus Jeff Hardy. Your bets are going to be Undertaker. Sometimes you might get the lucky win. The roll-up might happen for the shot factor, but that's what I'm feeling like with AEW at the moment. They're putting these top guys, uh, top wrestlers, against wrestlers that they're still making their, you know, getting their stripes, essentially. It's just not going to... The one I can remember, it was Cody Rhodes, the TNT Championship, and he did an open challenge, and there was a random person from the indie scenes um, made the challenge, and I thought, he's not going to win. <laughs> I understand it's all about the wrestling and the show and that stuff, but I wish I could be surprised a bit more. And that's what I had with um, this match. Great match, but I already kind of knew Kenny was going to win. But then after that... We had Adam Cole rock up. Now I get why Vince McMahon was the angriest he's ever been because Adam Cole gave him the news that he ain't staying around because I was reading up apparently Vince was really gunning for him to stay and yeah, it makes so much sense now. Joins the All Elite and I thought, oh great, that state was getting bigger. And then all of a sudden, mm, mm, I was like, oh. It's Brian Danielson! <laughs> Jeez, what a crowd of AEW wrestlers we got on now. I mean, who has WWE got left? So that's all that. I actually really enjoyed this pay-per-view. There was a few hit and misses with me, but 
overall, I felt really satisfied by the end of it. Like, I was happy. I didn't feel uh, ripped off, essentially. All right, so the next episode of AEW, uh, we had Dustin Rose versus Malachi Black. Another example. WWE former person's coming in and winning matches in seconds. I love this match because Dustin gave him a run for his money. There was a bit of back and forth, and that's what I really enjoyed. And yeah, I was I was quickly losing interest in Malachi. I thought I'm not going to get invested in squash matches again. And this is another issue I have with Lance Archer. It's like he rocks up squash matches. Okay, that's fine. And then he starts hitting the big, you know, the big wrestlers that are fighting back. And then there was a time he was squashing people again. Like, AEW, you're trying to steer away from a certain competition, but you're sort of doing the same thing. And that was what was getting me with Malachi. Bear in mind, Cody, the match lasted a bit longer, but it was one-sided. And then he, the next match, he, it was um, Brock Anderson fucking kicked his ass, and I'm not going to get invested with that. But then this match happened, and I thought, right, finally, now... I'm going to get invested in the guy because uh, I was following him in NXT. I thought he was really great, but then he moved up to the main roster and I was like, mm, no thanks. So, yeah, I'm happy he's having long matches. Oh, shit. MJF promo against the Pillmans. I hope he bought the auntie and the family some flowers after that because Jesus Christ he did not pull any punches and I didn't take any notes from the recent episode I just watched today you know oh Brian I need to told you oh who am I kidding Brian Pillman told him. I thought oh. Randy one got a lot of shit for that so I hope MJF is making it up to them behind the scenes because wow they are allowing him to get away with a lot of shit and I really like MJF, but even I was like, Ooh. Uh, Ruby versus Jamie Hayter. I feel like that the women's division is kind of um, getting up there now. It was kind of a dark period for that division where it just seems like they weren't getting the recognition they deserved. Every, the one thing I always noticed, and I was making a game out of it with Luke, I said, now check every... Um, Oh, how do I put it? So every match on the card where the men wrestlers see if they have an ad break. Then see if because I'm on Fight TV they'll say we're going picture in picture. We're still watching the match which is really awesome. Every time the one women's match was on oh we're going picture in picture don't go anywhere. The AEW title would come on and I'm like Excuse me? You had the whole night and the one woman's match. Now you cut away to the AW title for three minutes, which is the break time. I'm like, oh, AW, that is rude. But now I really feel like that they're sort of, you know, letting them get the spotlight a bit. Because I really want to see, you know, there's a lot of female wrestlers on there that I really enjoy seeing and you're not seeing them all the time. <laughs> I fucking forgot the pinnacle was still a thing. Jeez. And Dark Order's hidden break up. No, <laughs> I don't want him to break up, but I think it's kind of obvious. But I don't know if they will do it. Uh, Bray Wyatt might be coming in. You never know. So yeah, I've been catching up on AEW. Uh, not much WWE, and yeah, I'm getting a bit slack with my exercise, unfortunately. Uh, it was the jab. I just felt really bleh. But uh, no excuses. I know. <laughs> but uh, WWE, um. Bull Bull Cannon uh, appears on Raw with Boss Man. I was saying his name wrong for the longest time. Like, not now that I just realised, but years ago. I was always saying Bull Buchanan. <laughs> not Bull Bull Cannon. Whoops. And I noticed this. Uh, Kurt Angle is commentating a match between uh, Chris Jericho and Chris Benoit. And he gets in Benoit's face and he gets punched for it. But one of the medals rips away from his, um, his uh, strap. And he didn't, I don't think he noticed, and I was like, oh. bear in mind, they most, I, I think they were always fake. They weren't his legit medals, because, you know, if that shit gets stolen, Christ almighty. But, yeah, it's, I noticed that, and I thought, hey, Angle, you're, um, you're missing one. And, yeah, that's uh, it, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to get back in my exercise. It's just been very, bleh, the last few weeks. 
Oh, I already watched a few episodes of uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars, and I've done it like my... Um, what was I talking about? Uh, the Punisher Season 2. I've just written down each episode in uh, little paragraphs, which, you know, shortens it down a bit. Uh, so... I, don't, I didn't write the episode name, unfortunately. Sorry, I need a beverage. Throat's getting dry. Two episodes about the worm brain control was spooky. Especially the episode when one worm infected a clone and infects the entire ship, including a paddle on. There was a couple of great episodes. The, they find the worm, the, the, the brain queen, and yeah, then the episode after that, one of the clone troopers gets infected, and just that idea that they get zombified with these worms, it spooked me out. Uh, Grievous gets away after failing to capture a Jedi while on the hunt. Rex is, so this is a period between a couple of episodes. Uh, Rex is injured and left at a farm to recover, where he meets another clone who started a family. It's revealed he's a deserter. At first, Rex was going to report to the Republic about it, but by the end of the episode, he chose not to, because it was, uh, I forget what actually, he, he was afraid or something. His troops got attacked and he just couldn't handle it, so he, he deserted them and then he, he started a family, but Rex didn't have the heart to sort of break them apart and there was a moment where some droids were going to break in and he saved Rex so yeah good guy Rex and yeah Order 66 just hurts even more uh, this episode I actually really enjoyed this one uh, Ahsoka loses her lightsaber and is aided by an elder Jedi and teaches it all about patience throughout the episode and yeah it was just a really fun one all right so these were a couple of um like filler apps and this next one's going to be it's like a period of episodes so we learn the history of the Mandalorian. I wish I didn't realise how I thought I was way ahead in the seasons. I didn't get past much of season two because in this episode we got the black lightsaber. I didn't even know about it, so either I missed that episode or those episodes and continued on. But yeah, the Mandalorian. It makes so much sense now with you know Mandalorian, great show. But uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, we learn the history. When Obi Wan visits the planet Mandalore and meets Duchess Satine, is she related to Sabine from uh, Rebels? Because I picked up on that, and Sabine is wearing the Mandalorian armor, and I didn't actually check up on that. But um, uh, she's a pacifist and wants no business with the Republic and their wars. After an assassination attempt by a group called the Death Watch, Grey Group, it's discovered a uh, Previsla. Uh, once allied to Satine, wants to dethrone her and bring back the Mandalorian in its warrior state as it once was before Mandalore became an inner peace generation. He also wields the Black Saber. I actually really enjoyed this episode too. Uh, there's a traitor on the Senators. Once again, assassination attempt on Satine fails, causing a series of investigations among the ship. We learn more about the history of Satine and Obi Wan. Obi never wanted to leave, but the Jedi Code made his decision, and Satine never really got over how he could choose a life of war. Uh, we eventually learn who the traitor is, and taunts Obi Wan and Satine on who will be a cold blood killer because if neither proceed, he'll blow up the entire ship. Out of nowhere, Anakin does the job without breaking a sweat, just jing! And Obi Wan's like, Anakin, what? He's gonna blow up the ship. <laughs> Oh, Anakin's my favourite Jedi, he's my number one. And even after so many assassination attempts, Duchess Satine still refuses to allow the Republic to get involved with their affairs and being involved in their wars. Which, you know, fair enough, your choice. Uh, after another assassination attempt by Death Watch, she's actually accused of the murder and due to this she is overruled on her stance to keep out of the war and has no power to keep the Republic away. She eventually finds evidence and with the help of Obi-Wan, she is proven innocent and there was a setup to dethrone her, which has failed. And that's it, I uh, stopped her watching there and um, yeah, not that I didn't want to watch but I've just been doing other things and yeah, great season, really hooked. Uh, no movies in other TV because yeah, just focus on AW and, and the pay-per-view and all that stuff so yeah, haven't had a chance to watch any movies unfortunately but um, I've read some books, well, one book, uh, I finally read through uh, Del Toro Quest Volume 1 and yeah, I really enjoyed it, but um, I might not keep with it. I might just stick with just the one volume. I'm kind of satisfied with it, and uh, depending on how I go, I might get the next volume, because 
Yeah, I thought we were following this character, but I believe uh, we were following the father, if I got that right, because I was reading through it, and I, I was really hooked on it, just with what was going on and all that stuff, but yeah, the ending, I was like, oh, okay, interesting. It looked like we are following this character, but it turns out, no, he was preparing his son to go on this quest. To another reason, I haven't watched many movies or uh, other TV shows because I've just been basically watching... That's not true. I we watched uh, It Crowd uh, for first time in a while. I absolutely love that show, but I didn't actually watch it. I just had it on the background while I was doing stuff, and I can just kind of word that series out. I've watched it so many times and just love it. But, uh, yeah, along with that and just YouTube junk, essentially, because... What I did was some painting. I finally have my rain figure. I have always wanted a rain from Blood Rain. You know, to have a figure and I could never find one and I don't even know if there was any released. And just with my series I wanted to start doing, my figure combat series, I thought I'm gonna take the opportunity to make my bloody own figures. You know, I want something done, I do it myself, and yeah, I finally got my Blood Rain figure, and even with uh, custom arm blades, uh, they're from uh, a Warhammer set, I forget which one, but I wanted to get them hooked onto a wrist, but I couldn't, it was a bit too complicated, and I didn't want to stress myself out, and uh, I'll put pictures on over the video to show the full detail, but yeah, I'm very happy with how she turned out, very, very happy, and I used the Black Widow figure from um, uh, the Black Widow movie where she's wearing the white outfit and yeah it turned out really well very happy uh, and that's not all because I actually got another figure I just uh, finished painting this one was the quickest one I actually did it all in one night in like two hours and very impressed how this one turned out I made my own Jill Valentine figure uh, once again I used a Black Widow figure this one was from Infinity War and uh, I even did a custom Samurai Edge and even got the little stars logo on the uh, the grip. Unfortunately, I wanted her beret, but I couldn't find uh, any figure sets with a beret in it to just do it. And down the line, if I do find one, I will. But yeah, just once again, Jill Valentine has had figures, but I really wanted a sort of... Like a... Um, like a standard figure, you can adjust the joints and all that stuff. The one from the uh, NECA collection, oh, I can never remember. It's basically a statue. You you can adjust the posi like the the joint stuff, but it's practically in one position. Whereas this one, I can pose her and all that stuff. And yeah, then there was the one from Toy Wiz, but. Thirty dollar figure. Maybe 40 versus a $80 loose figure looking to possibly be a hundred and I just thought well no brainer I'll just paint my own one and yeah, I want to do Chris I want to do every Resident Evil character now and just find a figure and do a repaint and yeah very happy I kind of did a hybrid I did her Resident Evil 3 boot style with a Resident Evil 1 style outfit with the uh, you know the jacket and yeah, turned out really cool. And with that, I'm actually ready to do figure combat. I, I want to do a pilot episode because I was doing a, um, a test run with the dice and yeah, I think I need to do a video first just to work out the uh, the kinks and all that stuff because I don't want to be in a situation where it's just like, oh, one, like with the rule I've set, I figure it's just going to, it's going to be one-sided. So I'm looking forward to that now. I wanted to hold off until... I wanted to do a, the plan is from future apps, it's going to be random select, so whoever is going to be a worthy figure to be in this tournament. I've actually hand-picked the first tournament and I wasn't going to start until I had, you know, figures of the characters I wanted. Jill Valentine, Rain, I've got um, uh, my old style looking Sub-Zero, one of my first ones. Jade from Mortal Kombat, I'm really happy to, you know, paint her and... Uh, classic Lara Croft basically and yeah I'm ready now just got to get it all set up somehow and work out a way to 
you know, get it done. Alrighty, onto the games. Uh, Finnish Golf Story. Ooh, he got really difficult by the end of it, but uh, yeah, I won the tournament, won the big one. Some people still think I'm a fluke, but fuck them. <laughs> I'm the champion, and um, that was a really fun game. I actually really enjoyed that one, and can't believe I finished it. I mean, that was a game I felt so bad for, because I'd play one session, and then it'd be like six months later and get back into it, so yeah, feels weird that I actually finished it. Uh, another game I felt bad for that I just kept pushing aside because that unfortunately there was just other games at the time that were, took priority for recordings and now that I finished them I was just sort of picking up the pieces of finishing other playthroughs that I started and uh, another one of those is Pokemon the trading card game. I actually got a custom box for it finally and uh, yeah I am um, I'm a couple of sessions in I've actually got notes so um, my first session I won my first medal, finally. Got a kick-ass deck. Uh, Hitmonchan's my main at the moment, always dominating. And uh, I finally got my first Onyx card. He's my tank for that deck. Oh, she. My Onyx is always a she, named Yawn, referencing Yawn, the giant snake from Resident Evil. Second session, I won two more medals. First one had my winning streak. Oh, uh, the fire medal. Uh, I dueled someone and because I had a winning streak, I was really kicking ass and then I got uh, defeated because I couldn't get another Pokemon on the bench. And then third session, I had to take a break because I got destroyed. I completely forgot about abilities in this game. So I got my Charizard out, souping him up and basically to one hit kill every Pokemon my opponent sends out. They had a combination of Mew, Mr. Mime, Slowbro. Mew can't be attacked by evolved Pokemon. It was fucked. Slowbro's combination would take the health away, uh, damage away from Mew. And then Mr. Mime, what was his ta And I, I nearly rage quit because I could not get a hit in after so much build up. Oh yeah. This one, if you do more than 30 damage, no damage. So, yeah, I just got absolutely destroyed. And then there was another match where Bloody Executor, their ability is, or one of their moves is, with the amount of energy on that card, it's plus 10. And I was like, fuck. But apart from that, absolutely enjoying it. I want another game in the series. Oh, I actually put this down. I'm actually going to start putting in topics that I want to talk about instead of just things that I've done. Uh, WWF Smackdown Shut Your Mouth. I did a couple of sessions on that game. I'm actually going to restart because it's been a while since I jumped in and I was still kind of fresh with OBS and my retro tink. One of the sessions, possibly two, none of the audio recorded and then it's like, Oh, that's just a bummer. So I was like, now I've got to try and put music in and cut it up. And at the time, I didn't realize because what I wanted to do was have one wrestler and one female wrestler. I completely forgot you could have a non gender chosen for your wrestler. So a female wrestler can appear in the season mode and can win the titles. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. I want to have a. A being from out of this world come down to earth and destroy the WWF and claim the gold and that's what I want to do now I kind of just want to restart everything and start fresh now that I've sort of worked out my recording issues with that and looking forward to it but basically what I'm gonna do I'm gonna finish Pokemon first then a few other games and then I'll move on to that and just do a complete playthrough of it another game we got back into because I got burnt out on a couple of games uh, jumped into Minecraft, started working on the Spencer Mansion again, got a couple of rooms done. I've got to do a Canetopia soon on that, and yeah, just just fancy just to kick back and just play a game that I don't really need to sort of focus on, which is always a, a good feeling. Uh, next episode of Blow Knuckle Society. I haven't started the script yet, but I did, it's, it's that moment in time now where ideas are coming into my head, and I'm writing them down, and I'm starting to get the, um, the typing flow into action where I'm going to start writing up the script and get the next episode done. Uh, don't know when it will be sort of in the progress because next topic, 
Halloween. Halloween. Nearly got away from me again. I didn't realise it's like the 16th of September. I'm like, I haven't thought of an intro. I haven't thought about what games I want to do. As I'm recording this video, I finished filming my intro. Uh, I'm very happy with this one this year. Hopefully I can edit in a way that it kind of looks like what I'm going to be... Um, oh, what's the term for it? Parody of it? Parodying? I don't know the proper terminology for it, but a parody of an intro, then hopefully it all works out. And yeah, I've got my games list ready to go. The only game I'm disappointed in, um, the, uh, the trap games. There was like volume one, two, and or episode one, two, and three. Four was going to be released, they were saying soon, but it hasn't released yet. And I was really looking forward to doing that, but uh, it's still early days yet. It might get released. That's the one game I really want to do. Back on the Pokemon subject, uh, played a lot of new Pokemon Snap, but unfortunately I'm burnt out because I got stuck on the level where you had to take a picture of the plant in the underwater. I needed a walkthrough, but they did not help me. I, The thing I was reading kept saying you had to take a picture of this Pokemon that was glowing in this cave bit, like that jellyfish. Kept taking pictures, pictures, pictures. Wasn't going. Then I realised... No, I need the step before that, take a picture of the flower, but for some reason it kept taking me to that. So I just, after replaying that level, I kind of got burnt out, but um, that's why I jumped back into Minecraft basically. But I'll get back into it soon because I am enjoying it. Another game I burnt myself on Resident Evil Village. I, after I did my second playthrough, I had non stopped with the game and I did the beat the game in under three hours. Hardest difficulty, then I did a load of challenges and stuff, and yeah, I'm a little bit, mm, don't feel like playing it anymore, and just need a break from it basically, and once I get back in, I need to do the mercenaries. Alright, a couple of news with us some video games. There's a new Yu-Gi-Oh game coming out, a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Rush Duel. You know how I was saying I really wish for another story-based kind of trading card game? This one looks like that game, and I'm looking forward to it. it it's essentially, I was reading up, it's like the speed duel rules, but a little bit different, and I'm just happy we're going to get another card game that's story-based and not roguelike. I'm really looking forward to it. And the one I'm excited for. Uh, I hope I got this right. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It's getting a remaster or remake. I think it's remake. Yeah, I've wanted to do the first game for the longest time, but... The one on Steam is very buggy and hard to record. I did try, and I actually want to get an X. I wanted to get the Xbox One to play it, but now with the new Xbox, I'm going to wait to get that, and then I'll do it. Well, now that the remake's coming out, I don't know if I want to do that one or the old one. I'm just, I'm very excited. I've been wanting to play that one for the longest time. All right, and I thought I might show a little teaser. Uh, I'm going to try and build up a few of these before doing an unboxing. Uh, McDonald's has started getting into the Pokemon trading card game phase. See, these come out in the US a while ago now, and yeah, it was it was quite a funny moment. Um, we took Mum shopping for the day, and we had to get back home for work, and just lunch was a bit it was a bit tired. You know, didn't have enough time to really whip something up, so I said, "Fuck this, let's get some Maccas and." Uh, Mum's not a big eater, she just wanted a Happy Meal, and me and Luke got, you know, a basic burger, a quarter pounder and stuff. So Luke was in the back, and basically, I always say, check the food before we drive in case they miss something. And he's like, oh my god, there's Pokemon cards in here! And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, that's how we found out. Thanks to Mum getting the Happy Meal, we found out they're doing the, you know, the Pokemon thing here now. And, um, what I'm going to do... Because it's like a treat um, with me and Luke. Every payday, we'll get you know either Macca's or fast food or something. Have the day out and you know go to the comic shop, play some Pokemon Go. Uh, don't worry, I've got Pokemon Go coming up. I can't forget that. And uh, I'm just going to try and build up as much of these as I can. I'm not going to go too crazy like some people do. Christ, ordering like 50 Happy Meals just for these and then throwing the food away. That was bad. So, yeah, I'm just going to take my time, and as soon as the promotion stops, I'll do the video. I'm hoping I get a hollow Cyndaquil and Bulbasaur. That's all I want.
Alrighty, final part of the video, as always, let's get some Pokemon Go booted up and show you what I've caught. It's kind of like tradition now. Alright, I can't remember what tasks I did, but the one that's currently going on at the moment, the Misunderstood Mischief, and it's like, oh, this is a long one, 6 out of 16, and yeah, the professor keeps racking off for, you know, telling us the next task. Ooh, I've got a few, I didn't realise how much I actually had. So, to kick things off, got my shiny Leafeon and Glaceon. They're a bit bummed out, they're only a shade different from their original colours, but finally got my full uh, shiny evolution set, which I'm happy about. Who keeps Christ Almighty kicking Pokemon popping up? Oh, it's because my dude keeps lagging out. Oh, get a Pokestop, get a Pokestop, come on. Yeah, boy. Go to that gym, come on, get to that gym. Go, go, baby, go. Kick that woman's ass. I ain't budging. Man, I was stressing myself over this bloody Pokemon for the longest time, and now it's a weekly uh, event Pokemon, uh, a Ditto, and I got two. Got to give me an own tether jersey. It's like, how are you going to get new people and people like me who quit, you know, how are we going to catch up? Uh, this is the great way to do it, and now I've got so many Pokemon that I never thought I was going to get, now I do have, so yeah, it's always a it's a great way to sort of hook people back in, unless you don't join right now and you miss out. Alright, let's do a big one. Uh, got Victini, finally, a mythical Pokemon. Random one, Staryu, I won from a raid. Uh, don't see many Staryus, and it's actually one of my favourite Pokemon, so I just thought I'd you know, show on the video. Don't see many in the wild. Got a shiny snow run. Uh, won this from a raid when I was at the shop one day. I don't know which Pokemon I want to do. The uh, Frostlass and I forgot the other bloody Pokemon. I'm not sure which one I want to do. My flip for it. Mind you, it's like the saying, don't evolve your shinies until you got a full set. Got a Hooper. This was... Oh, I'm so glad I double checked because this was on a double split weekend. So it was on the Sunday. It was the... Uh, research task and then there was like the daily task where you had a certain amount of time to get it done and it was the Pokemon checklist where you had to catch every Pokemon and I couldn't work out what this Pokemon was I'm like I got an incense going and I'm at work you know trying to catch as many Pokemon without getting caught and I'll say hello you know, keep an eye out for this Pokemon make sure we get it because we want to get the cool shit and he was saying oh it's that pumpkin Pokemon with the hair like the Vines, I'm like, no, that's not it. Then I finished the tasks. It was like use incense, catch 15, and something like that, and then claim the reward. It was Hooper, and I'm like, Luke, get an incense right now and complete that task, otherwise you're going to miss out on the, the goodies. And yeah, I was so happy that I did double check that. Just like Star you I, I managed to win a raid, and I actually got two Raichus. I forgot to put one in there. The tag, you know. Yeah, it's always cool to see the aligned ones. Very happy with this one. I've got the legendary dog. Uh, Z oh, I feel bad. Zacian? 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 Uh, I actually got... Hang on. Two. Managed to win two raids, which is awesome. And Z Zamazenta. Zamazenta. I uh, only got one, unfortunately. I'm spewing. There was a load of Lugia raids, and I was hoping to get one for a shiny, but... We did one raid, got our asses kicked, there was no way we were going to win with like five, six people, and just no one was jumping in. I was like, mm. last but certainly not least, just got this one the other day, uh, Uxie, Uxie. Yeah, I actually really like the look of this Pokemon, it reminds me of Mew, reminds me of Mew that's just taken a Kabuto shell and popped it on its head. And that's it for Pokemon Go. I don't know if there's many events coming up, unfortunately, so next Kane's Bedtime probably won't have a whole lot, unfortunately. And that's an end to this episode of Kane's Bedtime. Thank you all for watching and you all have a good night.